All right, let's go straight to the phones today. Let's go to Alana in Colorado Springs. Alana, what's going on? How are we doing? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing so good. How is everything in the Colorado Springs area? Oh, it's lovely. No complaints here. It's so gorgeous. One of my best friends on planet Earth, my friend Craig, lives there. And, man, every time I visit, it's I get jealous. It's just such a stunning place. Very cool. We're very lucky. So what's up? How can I help? Um, so I am looking for ways to reconnect with my husband. Um, and I've heard you speak... Um, on past episodes about taking retreats annually with your wife um, to sort of do inventory and discuss your marriage. And I was interested in learning more about that. Very cool. So um, tell me about your husband. Um, So he is in the military and um, he will be returning from deployment at some point in the next, um, in the near future. And um, <laughs> I love how you did that. Like he'll next we uh, so late soon, eventually at some point. One day. <laughs> that was, we hope. that was such a, I'm not even going to say anything. Well, well done. That was awesome. <laughs> uh, if you work uh, with military families or you are a military family, you are laughing to yourself right now. If you're not just recognize they live in limbo and these poor spouses who are at home are carrying a lot, a lot of stuff on their shoulders. And so um, we're grateful for you, Alana. Okay, so he's coming back at some point, and go ahead. I cut you off. Um, yeah, so we've been married for eight years. Um, we have a five-year-old and a two-year-old. So on top of just the physical separation, you know, we've been spending the last five years um, with a, a bunch of crazy people in our house, um, keeping us awake and yelling. So um, I think just with the um, – I'm I work also, so we both have pretty high-stress jobs. Hmm. Um, and I think the most difficult part of deployment is when they come home and trying to reintegrate, um, because over several months, you really change who you are as a person. You have new experiences and you don't get to share them in real time, um, with your spouse. And so, um, it really, we had a a pretty hard time last time you came home. Hmm. Um, tell me about that. Tell me about the hard time. Um, so I was um, a full-time student and doing an internship. Um, my son was two, and I was pregnant, um, and he was gone for several months. He came back a week before my due date. Mm-hmm. Um, so we had integration plus a new baby. Yeah. Um, and so it was um, – and we have – part of the issue is that we have very different parenting styles. Okay. Um, so that's a big source of conflict for us, and we – um, between his last coming home from his last deployment and when he left last year, um, we've really been working on um, that together awesome. and um, trying to. We've we've made a lot of progress, but it still is. It's a source of of worry just for me, um, and yeah, and just I, I feel like we kind of don't. We we live together, we cohabitate, but. Mm. We've just lost some of the like fun parts of being married. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, you've got a couple, you got a, a double or even triple whammy here, and so I want to pull it apart a little bit, not give it the full. I mean, we could do a whole show on this, and maybe we will someday. Um, an entire show dedicated to veterans and their spouses and leaving and coming back and even just the day-to-day stuff, the identity stuff, all of that wrapping itself up into this little package called marriage and what what are we even doing together, right? Um, Mm -hmm. But today I want to pull a couple of pieces apart. Number one, you know this, but I just want to reiterate, if your husband was the most high functioning connected at home all the time and he was just an accountant having two little kids in your house is just it just everything changes right mm-hmm. and so you put that sort of deployment on top of I mean, that sort of return on top of that you put all of the political stuff all of the safety stuff all of the identity stuff all that goes into this big thing but it underlies Man, your house was already, <laughs> right? <laughs> already just like a snow globe that somebody shook up. And so what I want to to encourage you to do this time, the best you can, it's going to be hard, the best you can is to both of you, but you can only control you, right? To, to be open about doing this one new and not bringing any of what happened last time, not bringing any of the, we hey, we had these fights, it was crazy. 
let's start completely fresh here, okay? And you may mm -hmm. have to write stuff down. You may have to be intentional about, I'm nervous he's going to be coming home in two weeks or one week. And last time he got home and he didn't sleep and he was loud or whatever his challenges were reintegrating. Um, and so when he gets back, is he going to, is he getting out or is he going to stay in? Is he going to have a job no. on a base here? Yeah, he, he ha will have a job when he gets back. Um, oh, he's staying in. Okay, staying in. So his identity will still be, he still be military, right? He's not going to have yeah. to also... That's a whole other shift from military to civilian. Okay. So right. here, here's a couple of things. You said you've been working on your parenting styles. They're different. Is it fair to say you both love your kids? You just love them. The picture of what love looks like is different for both of you, and you're trying to merge that picture. Is that fair? Absolutely. Okay. So when you say you're scared or nervous, that word picks my, like, it, it piques my interest. What are you scared or nervous about? Is he a yeller and you're a hugger? Is he one there to have four corners when they make their bed and you just don't really care about? Like, what what are you nervous or scared about? Yeah, I would say that's that's pretty much it. Um, we both know that we fall on opposite ends of the spectrum, okay. um, and so he's very positive about it. He's like we balance each other out, um, but it's still I it's yeah it's still a challenge for me, <laughs> and I think part of it too is letting go of. Um, being the parent um, solo for nine months and, right. and letting him parent again. That's, that's also a challenge. Yeah. So here's a couple of things I want to challenge you guys to. Number one, I want you to start, and this is going to sound cheesy. I want you to start dating again, long distance. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what you're going to, what I want y'all to focus on is you're going to build a totally new marriage. You're going to build something. You've already got some great foundations to it. You've got a history to get. You've got almost a decade together, right? You've got two kids. Mm -hmm. But I want you to build a new adventure together and look at that as an opportunity, not as a chore, okay? Mm -hmm. It could be super exciting, but I want you all to start dating again and start intentionally being flirtatious, start intentionally being like, what could this look like? Not what is it going to be? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And it sounds yeah. tiny, and you hear those those analogies where somebody's driving, and if you just turn the wheel one degree, you end up turning all the way around. Was it wow, what book was I reading recently? Maybe it was James Clear's book that says the the takeoff from if you're at LAX and you're going to go to Washington D.C. or you're going to uh, what was the other one? Maybe it was Boston. The difference in it was seven feet. That's how mm -hmm. different the no, the nose angle of that plane is to get you from, oh, it's New York City to Washington, D.C., right? So I'm talking little bitty things, but hey, I want to imagine what our romantic life is going to be like. I want to imagine what waking up next to each other is going to be like. I want to go ahead and let's, could we get, not premarital counseling, but could we go ahead and set up some counseling where we can learn how to be married again and what we're going to build, get a common language and accomplish things together. But you see what I'm saying? I want this to be an exciting, awesome moment, like a reset, not a, how is he going to fit into our life? Does that make sense? Yes. And the biggest challenge folks have, not the biggest, there's a bunch of challenges reintegrating, but one is you just nailed it. You've got a life, right? It's not one that you love. You'd love him to be around, but you got a life of, man, your kids have a routine. Y'all do things in a certain way. They come to you for clothes and laundry. You'll have everything. And then you try to figure out how to shove him into that when he gets back. That's a cause of so much conflict. So rebuild it from the floor up. The second thing is give me two or three things that you love about him. Oh, he is incredibly smart. Um, he loves his kids and he takes really good care of us okay none of that had to do with y'all two <laughs> you gave me three different things one attribute about his cognitive ability and two performance slash achievement based things mm -hmm. what do you love about him he makes me laugh let me ask this a little more um, PG-13. <laughs> what gets your heart beating again? Um, he always thinks I'm beautiful. He tells me all the time. Does he show you? Yes. Okay. And when he says you're beautiful and he shows you're beautiful and he looks at you across the room in that way that you know, whoo, that gets your heart beating faster again. Yes. Do you miss that? Yes. Are you excited for that to return when he gets back? 
I'm very excited. Yeah. Okay. And I know that part's hard because you got to shut that off, right? You got to completely mm-hmm. turn that off. That's why I want you all to start dating again. Okay. Mm-hmm. And the things that you love about him, I want you to focus on not the achievement things, the things he's going to bring back, but I want you to focus on him, right? Mm -hmm. And then the third thing is, is I really, this sounds so cheesy. So here's some things that we do on, that my wife and I do on our, on our retreats together is we look in the, in the past with that past year, the things that have gone well, things have been hard, right? This is going to be a little bit different. You don't have to go back if you don't want to, um, but you can go back and say, hey, in the past, this has been tough. This has been tough. I want this to be like this, right? Um, and then we spend some time on what is this year going to look like? If we could, if it could be as perfect as we want it, what would it look like? What are some savings goals? How much do we want to pay off on our house? How much uh, do we want to go trips together? What's our week going to look like every week? Like I want to make sure we're building in times for us to connect throughout the week. And then we'll let the week fill in on behind that. So depending on what his job is there, um, but we set some Here's who we want to be. We want to be, we've been, my wife and I have been together, gosh, 18 or 19 years. We want it to be like, we want to make sure we're still flirty. We want to make sure we're still laughing. We had a hilarious food fight the other night in our house. And right when I drilled my son with like a, like a half eaten banana and he threw it back and it blew up all over me. I watched my wife do, she in like exhaled and I could see it like, uh, and then it's almost as though she remembered, Oh yeah, we're having fun. And then she's like, y'all are cleaning it up. And then she got involved. Like, so it was those, we set those parameters. We want to be folks who are just silly again. Right. And he may say, I want to have some higher structure than last time. But what you're doing is you're being engineers and architects for the future, not complaining and whining about the past and not being anxious about, is he going to fit in our thing? You're going to have to rebuild a whole new thing. And your kids, bring them along, not for the romantic part, not for the discussion of who we're going to be as a couple, but bring them along when he gets back. I want you all to to, um, have a canvas, right? I should have brought mine. Um, I didn't know we were doing this, but I have a canvas at our house that we did with our kids and it's our family core values. Like, who are we? And we say yes. And we have adventures and we treat each other with dignity and respect. And we have, uh, we are hospitable. We always have pe- crazy people staying at our house. And so whenever I'm like, Hey son, let's go out and play in the Creek. And he's like, I don't know, dad. I'll say, Hey, we're adventurous. Us Delonies are adventurous. And he's like, okay, all right, that's who we are. And then we head out, but inviting the kids into that, to, as a part of this rebuilding together. I love it. So here's the thing. Really focus on him. Start dating each other again. Go ahead and get somebody. Go ahead and get a professional. And ho- some military guys aren't into that. Guy, military guys, if you're listening to this, it's cool, man. Go see somebody to help you learn a new language. This is just a new set of skills. Doesn't mean you're broken. Doesn't mean um, you're dysfunctional. It means, hey, I'm going to pick up some new tools. I've been gone a year. I'm going to help get some coaching as I re-enter this and then build something new together, right? Don't try to drag the past forward and see if he can plug into the your existing world. Now let's rebuild something new. It's going to be incredible. Alana, I want to know when he gets back. I want you both to give me a call. Let me know how things are going and then we can check in and see how things are rocking and rolling and see if I might be able to help along the way. But the fact that you're calling now tells me Man, it's going to be so good. I want to thank your husband for his service. I want to thank you for being a rock star of a mom holding it down there in Colorado Springs. And I can't wait to hear your story about y'all getting reconnected. It's so good.